Good afternoon. Welcome as we celebrate the nativity of our Lord. We welcome the people who are praying with us at home. to the celebration of the Feast of the Nativity, which is just the fancy word for Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Before we listen to God's word this evening, let's take a moment to prepare ourselves to celebrate this great feast and to acknowledge that we are in the presence of a God and we need that God's mercy for our failures and our foibles. For the weakness of our faith, we pray, Lord, have mercy. mercy. For our lack of hope, we pray, Christ, have mercy. mercy. And for our failures in love, we pray, Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting.
join together now in a moment of silent prayer. Lord God, you have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light. Grant that we, who have experienced the mysteries of Christ's light on earth, may also now delight in his joy in heaven. And we make this prayer in his name, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they revo rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils, for the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, sh will be used as fuel for flames. For a, for a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful, from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains through judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Let the heavens 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness, and to cleanse for himself a people of his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled in a census. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to their own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Now there were shepherds in the region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were struck 
with great fear. The angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy, joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all those on whom God's favor rests. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. The prophet Isaiah told us that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. That light is Jesus. Elizabeth and our cast of just about ready for primetime players will now spread some light on the story of Jesus' birth. We've just heard a very important story. Perhaps we could understand its meaning better if some of our children helped us. So the first person we hear about is a Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus. Who told everyone that he wanted to count all the people under his authority. The rule was that they had to return to their town of their family came from. Not an easy thing to do before we had cars. I would have to walk to Utica. That's a long way. <laughs> Mary and Joseph had to obey the rule, even though Mary was about to give birth to a baby. They went to a small town called Bethlehem that was so crowded with travelers that they could not find a place to stay. Mary and Joseph, where did you end up? In Bethlehem. And where in Bethlehem did you? In a farm. How comfortable was that? Not very. Okay. While they were there, Mary gave birth to a baby, Jesus. And she wrapped him in blankets so he would stay warm. The next people we hear about are shepherds, people who take care of sheep and maybe some goats out in the countryside. An angel appeared to them and told them that their savior, the person they had been waiting for for just about since forever, had been born in Bethlehem. Could all our sheep come with their shepherds? So the shepherds went to see for themselves. Shepherds, how did you feel when you heard the good news? Yes? How did you feel? Scared? How else did you feel? Pardon? Surprised? Maybe excited? It was good news. All of a sudden, there wasn't just one angel, but a whole bunch. Maybe ten, or maybe a hundred. Oh, 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 oh. 
These are all the people we heard about in the Gospel story by St. Luke. Are we missing anyone? Who are we missing? Could we be missing the wise people and maybe the star that led them? The Gospel of St. Matthew tells us that a little while later, some people who like to watch the night sky saw a strange star. They thought the star meant something important had happened, so they followed it. Where do you think it took them? Where did the star take them? Anybody know? Where? Where Jesus was born, that's right. That's exactly where the star took them. You have a Christmas story about Jesus, so you know it all. Yes? So they didn't find him right away. It took a little while. Yes, yes? They found him two weeks after. Two, exactly that long, two weeks after. So, so it took a little while. Yes? Three boys were following the star. So what are some of the things, three men, well, three people. So what are the, some of the things the story of Jesus' birth tells us? Yes. Oh, star. I'm sorry. Okay. Mary and Joseph were poor and far away from their home when Jesus was born. So they understood how scary it was to have no place to stay and no family or friends nearby. Different kinds of people are interested in being friends with Jesus. Some work hard to taking care of our world and its creatures, like the shepherds. Some are scientists, pondering the wonders of creation. And most of Jesus' friends are somewhere in between, like you and me. May we always look for Jesus and be guided by the light of love. And so we thank our children for helping us see and understand this beautiful story. Well, not only should our parents be proud of those children, but you should all be happy because that was shorter than my preaching would have been. <laughs> Let's now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
We come before the Lord now and one another with our prayers for ourselves, our families and communities, our nation and our world. The angels sang the night Jesus was born. May we try to bring joy to others this Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mary and Joseph took care of Jesus. We pray for God's special Christmas blessings on all families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus was born in a poor manger. May people that do not have homes find a place to live. We pray to the Lord. The shepherds were the first to hear about Jesus. Help us to sh share the good news with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord the wise men followed a star to find Jesus. Keep all who are traveling safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus came to earth so we can live forever. May all who have died go to heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus loves us and wants us to be happy. We remember that all the prayers we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord do our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the many ways in which you bless our lives. And we ask that you continue to bless us with what we need to be faithful disciples of your Son. And we make these prayers in his name. Amen. Amen. I invite you now, if you brought an offering, to place it in the baskets at the base of the altar platform. If you prefer to give online, you may do so by going to our website and clicking the donate button.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that these simple gifts may be acceptable to our gracious God. Loving God, may this sacrifice that we offer on this great feast be pleasing to you, so that through it we may be formed in the likeness of your Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom our nature is now united to you. And we make this prayer in his name, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Then let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God, our loving Father, we are glad to give you thanks and praise because you love us. With Jesus, we sing your praise. Because you love us, you gave us this great and beautiful world. Because you love us, you sent Jesus, your Son, to bring us to you and to gather us around him as the children of one family. With Jesus, we praise you. For such great love, we thank you with all the angels and saints as they praise you and sing. Blessed be Jesus, whom you sent to be the friend of children and friend of the poor. He came to show us how we can love you, Father, by loving one another. He came to take away sin, which keeps us from being friends, and hate, which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us always, so that we can live as your children. Loving God, we now ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts to change us and them into the body and blood of your Son. On the night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed just how much he loved us. When he was at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, passed it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And when the supper was ended, he took a final cup of wine and thanked you, dear God. He gave the cup to his friends and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And now let us proclaim this mystery of our faith. Profess your resurrection till you come again. And 
so loving Father, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal. May your Spirit bring us closer together into the family of the Church. With Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Edward, our Bishop, and all who bring hope to our world. Remember, Father, our families and our friends, and all those that we do not love as much as we should. Remember those who have died in our families. Bring them home to you, to be with you forever. Gather us all together into your kingdom. There we shall be happy with you, with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and there all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a festive song of joy. We praise you, we bless you, and we thank you. For through him, with him, and in him, Lord God Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And because we strive to live together as sisters and brothers, we can call upon God and pray in truth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from needless worry and anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ be with each of you. And let's share that with one another. Merry Christmas. 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 Merry Christmas.
And this is Jesus, the Son of the living God, here in our midst. Happy are we who gather round this table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to life everlasting.
Let's continue to pray together. Lord God, we pray that all of us who rejoice in the feast of your son's birth may through our lives become worthy of one day enjoying union with him in heaven. And we make this prayer who lives and reigns with you in the spirit, our God forever and ever. Just a few thank yous. First of all, to our decorators who took us with an, over a little more than an hour from the fourth Sunday of Advent to Christmas. For our children and parents who helped bring together the gospel story. For Ellen, Sarah, Meg, and the other volunteers who helped our children do that very thing. To our choir, wonderful choir, and to Jesse and Marie. Our readers and other liturgical ministers, to Father Ken lead, for leading us in this Mass, and most of all, to this wonderful, um, wonderful assembly gathered here to praise God. And we thank all of you. May you have a blessed Christmas. Let's stand now and ask for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the birth of his Son has illuminated this most holy night, drive from us all darkness of heart and mind and spirit. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced by shepherds, fill your minds with the gladness that Christ gives and make you heralds of his good news. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together earth and heaven, now fill you with the gift of his peace and make you sharers with all the church in the heavenly life. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon us and remain with us throughout this season in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy is ended. Let us live in the peace of Christ.